Hey, Tom here from The Run Testers, and in this video, I am going to be talking about whether I can get PBs in all of the major road running distances wearing the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. Let's see if I did it. So I've spent a lot of the last three to four months training for Chicago Marathon. And when I started training for the race, I wasn't entirely sure what shoe I was going to wear. I was going for a sub three attempt at Chicago Marathon and I was very worried about the shoe that I was gonna wear for this because as, as far as my training was concerned, getting a sub three was gonna be pretty much on the nose. So I wanted a shoe that was gonna give me the best chance of getting that sub three that I could. Um, and if I pick the wrong shoe, it might mean the difference of three or four minutes and tip me over the edge and I wouldn't get my sub three. So I've been a bit worried about which shoe to go for, um, for, for the Chicago Marathon. So when I picked up the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, I really liked it from the off. I went out for a 10K run in it straight away um, and it just felt fantastic. I wasn't a fan of the Saucony Endorphin Pro 1 or the 2. They just felt a bit too firm for me. I raced in the 2 and I just didn't enjoy it. I, I, I didn't get a good time in the race that I did. Uh, I just didn't enjoy that race at all. It just felt like my legs were doing a lot more work wasn't a shoe for me. I like a bit of cushioning. I like a bit of bounce. Pro 2 just didn't do it for me. Pro 3 felt like a completely different shoe when I took it out of the box and started running it. It felt light. It felt bouncy. I was very surprised by how the shoe felt um, when I first put it on. So over the course of a few weeks, I really wanted to find out if this shoe was going to be the shoe that I wanted to use for Chicago Marathon. And um, to do that, I did quite a few races over the last three or four months. Um, and in each of those races, I wore the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, and I wanted to get a PB in all those races to see where the strengths of this shoe lie. When it comes to race shoes, some shoes are better at longer distance, some are better at shorter distances. The Adidas Adios Pro 3 is quite nice for longer distance efforts. I wouldn't use it for a 5K and a 10K. I want something a little bit more pep, a little bit more bounce. Um, and similar thing with the Alpha Fly. I like the Alpha Fly for marathon distance. I don't like using it for 5K and 10K. The Vaporfly is significantly more versatile. You can pretty much use that shoe across any distance and it is fantastic. So I wanted to find out where the uh, Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 sat into that carbon plate world. Was it a versatile shoe or was it better for certain distances than others? Now I have been doing a lot of training over the past three or four months, more training than I've ever done before. So it's pretty likely that I was gonna get PBs in all of those races, um, but the key thing is that I wanted to see how the shoe delivered in those ones. So um, not only would I want to get a PB in those races, but I wanted to see how the shoe delivered and if there were certain races that it just worked really well for uh, and if there was any that it didn't really um, tick the boxes for. So the idea behind this video is that I'm just going to go through each of these races and talk about how the shoe delivered on those, on those fronts and if it helped me to get the PB that I wanted. <music> So the first race I did was a 5K and the race that I did was the LGN Advertising 5K in Regent's Park in London. Now up until the point of doing that race, my PB um, was 18.55 and that was with the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent 1 and that was at the Olympic Park in uh, Stratford in London. Uh, I've also got an 18.35 um, Park Run PB which was in the Adidas Adios Pro three uh, fairly recently. Um, so when I headed down to Regent's Park, I was wearing the Endorphin Pro 3, and I ended up with an 1818, which I was pretty surprised with because I didn't think I'd ever get that fast over 5K, uh, and it sort of made me want to go under 18 minutes now. Uh, but what I found in that race is that it is this is a brilliant shoe for short distance. It just feels like there's a lot of pop to it. It feels quite light on the feet. Um, and that it had no issue at all with going at my max kilometer pace over 5k distance. It felt absolutely fantastic. Um, the difference with this is something like the Vaporfly. I think the Vaporfly is a very bouncy shoe. You can feel it, the foot being propelled forward. You're almost being pushed to, to get those PBs. Uh, I don't think you get that in this. It just subtly helps you run faster without feeling like it's modifying the way that you're running or anything like that. So it's a, it, it feels more natural to me, um, the Pro 3. And I really enjoyed that um, over the 5K distance. And I was hoping that it would um, continue, that same, that same feeling would actually help me out over the longer distances. The 
next race I did was a 10 mile distance race. Now I went back to my hometown of Heckington in Lincolnshire where we do a, a 10 mile road race um, around the village. My original PB for that 10 mile road race at that location was 66 minutes 58 seconds, which I'd done the previous year. And that was around the Nike Vaporfly next percent once. Um, and yeah, the Vaporflies are fantastic for that race. Um, but when I went back this year to do that, I got a 64 uh, 29, um, which was sort of that distance is an interesting distance because you're going from those sort of shorter distances like the 5k and 10k into the realms of the more endurance long distance running and the natural feel of the shoe over that distance really came into its own it was far superior to what i got from the 5k in it because over the course of that 10 miles i just had such a nice consistent pace and this shoe really helps with that it doesn't you almost don't feel it on your feet but you are managing to maintain that really nice consistent pace very comfortably it's nice and bouncy it's limiting the impact of on on the legs it just helps you it just feels really comfortable over that distance and um i was really surprised actually because i would, i wasn't really trying to get a pb um hard in that race um i was I, I was just set into a really nice comfortable pace in that race um and to get a nice over two minute pb uh i was really pleased with but the shoe did great at, at, at that distance <music> Then I did a 10K and the 10K wasn't as successful as the other races I did, but I don't think that's to do with the shoe. So I headed over to the Little Hampton 10K um, and I was really quite scared about this one because my 10K time um, was 38, 18, which I'd done a few years earlier, a couple of years earlier, um, just after the first lockdown. And I'd really trained quite hard for 10K distance at that point. And so 38, 18, I was really pleased with that. That was a PB by about a minute and a half for me um, over that distance. And it's by far, up, up till the point where I was doing these PBs, this, that was by far the one that I was most worried about breaking because it's probably my most impressive PB based on my uh, ability to run. Uh, unfortunately, when I got to Little Hampton, it was very windy. It was not a nice day. The run was along the coast. For the first 5K, it was looking like I was on for a PB, but I was really, really struggling uh, in that race and I just couldn't maintain it. There was a, a straight uh, towards the la latter half of that uh, 10k which was just like a wind tunnel and I had no energy left in that so in the end of that race I ended up with 38 36 which I was pretty happy with um, based on the fact that um, that it was a bad day for it and I'm actually quite annoyed it was a bad day because I could definitely have got a PB in that race um, if it was an, a nicer day but hey hum uh, didn't get my PB but the shoe itself as as um, you know, as as I expected from the five k, it felt very similar to what it did over the five k distance, um, and yeah, it did a great job. Um, it felt very comfortable. It definitely wasn't the shoe that was the issue, um, but I would say that it is still a shoe that excels over that sort of five k and ten k distances. So next, it was almost the big one. Uh, so this was Pleshy Half over in Essex, um, and. I was pretty nervous about half marathon distance because this was about a month before doing Chicago Marathon. So the time that I got in the Pleshy half would directly affect how I felt about running the um, marathon in Chicago. My previous PB for a half marathon was one hour, 27 minutes and 47 seconds, which was at Cambridge half uh, just before the first lockdown. Uh, and I was very pleased with that time because I'd never broken uh, 130 before. Um, so I was pretty pleased with that time. And um, to get the time that I wanted, the sub three in Chicago, I would need to shave off quite a few minutes off of that. And so I wasn't very um, optimistic that I was going to do that. Um, and if I if I couldn't do that in Pleasure Half, I knew that I probably wasn't on for a sub three because I needed to have a pretty comfortable um, time to get under that. So Pleasure Half was actually quite a hard race. It's quite undulating. There's quite a lot of little hills in it and stuff like that. It's quite windy. So you can't really plan out the race, the, the route that you're doing. Um, so I was a little bit worried about it when we got there, but I managed to get a one hour, 23 and 35 seconds PB um, in that race, which I was blown away with. I didn't think I'd get a, a, that fast a time in consideration of my previous uh, half marathon time, which I really tried quite hard to get that um, at, at, the, at that point. So the shoe over half marathon distance it really starts coming into its own. All of the distances, I'm really 
been really impressed with this shoe. But once you start getting to those longer distances, and this is the, that was the first time that I'd raced at um, that that over that ten mile distance, it really does come into its own. It's, it feels so efficient over those distances, but not not noticeably it's not like the vaporfly it's not really affecting your running style it's just smooth efficient comfortable um the upper works really nicely with the midsole foam so you're not really um it's it doesn't feel like it's constricting the way that you're running in any way uh, it's just a very natural enjoyable feel and the power on pb midsole foam um just really helps with every footfall i didn't i didn't think about the shoe when i was running in it which is kind of what you want when you're running longer distance races um and did a great it did a great job of that so really pleased with all these things so far then it was the big one so now i had my new one hour 23 minute 35 second pb at half marathon distance I was pretty sure that this is the shoe that I wanted to wear for it. There were still some concerns in my head. I My previous marathon PB was in the Alpha Fly 1, uh, which was a PB, the, a 312 PB, which I was not expecting to get. And I partially put that down to the fact that the Alpha Fly was a fantastic shoe for that. So I still had in the back of my mind that I was might be using the Alpha Fly for the race, but I really wanted to use the Endorphin Pro 3. So the um, Pleshy Half really sort of gave me confidence to say that this is the shoe that I wanted to wear the marathon in. Um, and it was a good choice because I went over to Chicago three weeks ago and my aim was to get a, a sub three. A sub three is something that I never thought I'd ever get in a marathon. Um, I Previously, my 312, I, I got in Bilbao. I, I don't know how I got it. I was quite pleased to get that, but I definitely wasn't expecting that. And most of my marathons normally sit around the 325 to 335 mark. Um, but I wanted to get a sub three because I wanted to qualify for Boston uh, in the next couple of years. So I did a lot of training with Steph Twell and the One Track Club. Um, and yeah, I wanted to get that sub three, but it was going to be close and it was going to be tight. Um, but I decided this is the shoe that was I was going to do it in. I had a pacing strategy for Chicago that was pretty optimistic. Normally my marathon pace for um, a, a, any race that I'm doing is about 420, 430 kilometers. My marathon pace to get my uh, sub three would be around four 15 minute kilometers, which is not a pace that I'm particularly comfortable with. Um, and I'd have to be pretty consistent with that. What I did in the race was I decided to start off a little bit faster. So I get sat, tried to sit in around a four ten kilometer pace. Um, but I felt really comfortable. I actually sort of dropped it down a bit and thought, I'm just going to take it, just going to take it down by a, a second uh, every kilometre and see if I can maintain the pace by going a little bit faster. And I managed to get it down to like a 405 pace um, and I held it for the whole way. I pretty much had a, a flat uh, pacing strategy across the whole of the Chicago Marathon, which I was amazed by. I didn't think I'd be able to maintain it for that for that long. Got, struggled a little bit of cramp towards the last two k, so I took it a bit easy on those two ones. Um, but the uh, so I ended up with a two five five fifteen uh, time in Chicago Marathon, which I was blown away with. I didn't think I'd ever get a time like that, um, especially five minutes under sub three pace. So I was really happy with that. And the Socken Endorphin Pro Three, I absolutely loved it for the marathon. It's I've I've never run in a shoe that I felt so comfortable with over marathon distance with so shoes like the vaporfly i think it does it does have a nice level of bounce it does feel like it's helping you propel you forward but it does feel like it's slightly manufactured you can feel that shoe doing something you can't feel the shoe doing anything i i didn't i didn't worry about the shoe once during that whole um, marathon attempt it was really comfortable uh, i had no issues with it at all even the vaporfly you can sort of feel it on your feet and you can um, feel the propulsive elements of it which does feel nice and i definitely like that over short distances but for me this just felt really natural over the course of that whole marathon so i've been so impressed with the pro 3 over the course of that testing and doing all of those different races it's just really ticked the boxes for me in every single one of those distances the main thing for me is that that natural feel that doesn't feel like it's moving your foot in a certain way is really conducive to running longer distances in and i'd definitely be looking at using this for um Barcelona marathon that I've got coming up in uh, March next year just because it's so comfortable and natural on the, on the feet so um, yeah I've it, it's been a fantastic shoe to train in and a fantastic shoe to do all those, those races in so although I didn't get 
PBs in all of my distances. I've still got the 10K to do, and hopefully I'll find a nice day for that uh, to, to get to 10K. Um, but I have been consistently impressed with the Sokken Endorphin Pro 3 and what it can do. I think it's a very versatile option, um, and I think it's probably up there with me uh, as the best longer distance shoe. I still think the Vaporfly I might go for over short distances because I do want that pop over short distances a lot of the time. I do want to feel like I'm being propelled forward. Um, but this is a very, very close second. Um, and I, I definitely, as an all-rounder race shoe for taking a lot of boxes across all race distances, the Pro 3 for me really has done the job. Okay, so that's it from me on the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 and my testing in every single uh, road distance, uh, apart from the mile. I never did, I didn't do a mile test in this. I should probably do that at some point soon. Um, but that's my overview of how that testing's gone and um, my PBs in the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. Uh, great shoe, uh, well worth looking at for pretty much every distance. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell and check the channel out for all the videos we've got from the latest road and trail shoes as well as running headphones and watches out at the moment. And don't forget to listen to the monthly podcast. If you go into the caption below, you can find a link to the most recent podcast where we talk about various things in the world of running um, and you can find it from the podcast provider of your choice. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you soon.